Joran goes wild with a whole lot of wine. Joran van der Sloot sits down for an interview with a Dutch talk show. But when the show is over and the microphones are cut, watch what Joran does. Tot maandag. Tot maandag. And there it was, the former suspect in the Natalie Holloway disappearance tossing red wine into the eyes of Peter DeFries. Now, DeFries is a crime reporter who has followed the Holloway case. We spoke with him earlier today by phone, and we asked him about the incident. Peter DeFries, thanks so much for being here with us. So let me start with the, uh, with the obvious. What happened that led him to throw this glass of wine in your face? Yeah, well, uh, I was invited in the in the daily uh, late night show with uh, Joran van der Sloot, his uh, father and mother, and uh, the reason, of course, was his uh, recent uh, release from Aruba, and Joran tried to uh, emphasize uh, during the show his innocence, and his parents backed him up. Uh, my role, of course, was to be critical. Uh, I investigated this case thoroughly, and uh, I asked him several inconvenient questions about his lies and his inconsistencies and contradictions in his story. Um, and he could never uh, answer them, really, dur during the show, but uh, he managed to behave. And, and let's, let's back up just one minute and, and just tell us, what kind of a program is this for American viewers not familiar with it? Oh, it's, it, it's a daily late night show, and uh, 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 Joran was, was one of the guests with me, and I'm a crime reporter, and I investigated this case. And what kinds of questions were you asking him during the program that got him so irritated? Well, I, I, I uh, asked him uh, a lot about his doings that night and about his lies that he dropped uh, Natalie off by the uh, Holiday Inn Hotel. And I asked him uh, how he came home that night and where he left his shoes, that kind of questions. And he, 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 he was frustrated about that. And uh, he managed to behave during the show, but uh, afterwards, after the incident with the glass of wine happened, he told me that he... He, he, he already wanted to curse me during the show, but uh, at that time he could control himself. But when uh, the show was, was off, uh, he lost control. And then he said, yeah, I, I had to do something. And he grabbed the glass of wine and uh, throw, throw it in my, in my face. You know, we're looking at this video of it with you, you know, holding your eyes. It looks like it was pretty painful for you to get a uh, bunch of red wine in your eyes. Yeah, because I, I, I didn't see him throwing the glass of wine, so I, I didn't close my eyes. And it, it, it's, uh, there's alcohol in it, so yeah. that's, uh, that's rather painful. First of all, what kind of program is this that they serve wine during the middle of the broadcast? And, and how can we get that here in America? Yeah, it's a late night show. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happened after the incident was over? Did he apologize to you? Did his parents say anything to you? Yeah, at, at first his mother came up to me and she apologized uh, more than a thousand times. And she said, oh, this is awful and uh, I don't know what to say. And uh, yeah, very painful. And uh, 20 minutes later, uh, Joran apologized two, uh, three or t uh, two or three times. He did. Uh, what did he say? Yeah, he said that he was frustrated because I was uh, I was critical. I was uh, asking questions all the time, and I uh, I, I was uh, emphasizing that he that he lied several times. And I said, yeah, I, I got frustrated about that, and I, I wanted to do something. What what was your reaction? What, if anything, do you think the incident says about your end? Yeah, well, I think uh, that, uh, um, yeah, we have seen the real Joran, that this is how he is, this is how he acts. I mean, does it tell you anything about w what you believe to have happened in the case? No, nah, well... He, he didn't do himself a favor, I think, with this uh, with this incident, and uh, all the people here saw it, and yeah, I think uh, uh, he lost a lot of credibility, which was already low here in Holland. Were you surprised that he would have lost control like that? I mean, I know the cameras had stopped rolling, at least as far as the broadcast. It was still on tape, because we've all seen it now, but were you surprised that he lost his cool to that extent in front of all those people? 
No, I wasn't really surprised that he lost control because I know him very well. I investi investigated this case very uh, thoroughly and um, yeah, I know his character and, and this, is, uh, this uh, fits completely in it. Mm. Well, we've got to go, but I want to ask you, you feeling okay now? Yeah, I feel okay, and uh, it, it, it was rather rather bad wine, but I'm okay. <laughs> bad and got a whole lot worse towards the end there. Peter DeVries, yeah. thanks so much for being here with us. Okay, you're welcome. All the best to you. Well, Yoran's lawyer, Joe Tacopina, issued a statement which reads, While Yoran's conduct with the journalist is not excusable, he and his family have been under tremendous pressure over the last two and a half years. He has been the subject of false accusations for which he has been exonerated, libel and slanderous statements, and even death threats to him and his family. The reporter in question at the conclusion of the interview made a rather crude remark which caused a reaction from Yoren that he now regrets. This incident does not change the fact that he had nothing to do with Natalie's disappearance as proven by the evidence or lack thereof and the dismissal of the investigation against Yoren. Well, in response to that statement, the reporter DeFries told us the only thing crude that happened at, the, at that table was Yoren's boorish behavior. So, well, coming up, the bail bonds.